Hello again, my name is Ernest Timino. Let's settle for the details now and we'll begin with governance. Governance analyst Professor Bafwa Jimanduyam is urging President Ikufado to listen and consult on the calls for a reshuffle. The president, in an interview on North Star Radio in Tamale Monday, said his current crop of ministers have been outstanding and calls especially by the opposition NDC for a reshuffle is only to destabilize his government. Even if I did, <laughs> even if I did, get up with respect, it's not on your radio station. You will not be shuffling anybody here. Uh, I'm not <laughs> going to reshuffle anybody here. That is a matter that I will take okay. uh, uh, in an appropriate way. In the now. But let me say it again. I okay. know that uh, people, are, people, people are making a lot of noise about this matter. Okay. But several of the people who are responsible for assisting me to steer the country out of the difficulties that we inherited okay. and out of the difficulties that have subsequently come are still in place. Okay. And many of them, for me, have done an outstanding work. Their output has been considerable. And, it, and that's what I look at. Okay. There's an issue about reshuffle or the performance of ministers. It isn't as if it is something that every now and then my mind comes to. Okay. It's a daily preoccupation for me. Yeah. I'm required on a daily basis to ask myself whether the output of particular ministers is up to the mark. But I yeah. am the final yeah. authority, and yeah. if, if they're not up to the mark, I'm required to act. Yeah. But if the output measures the expectations, then I don't have any strong reasons to, to, to heed the call. Okay. So have they really been outstanding? Well, some of you disagree with the president. Uh, I do believe him in some ways, but not that completely. It's not be perfectly complete that all the ministers are performing at their best. He needs to do something about the education ministry. And talk of... Um, that of the other minister, I think uh, Minister for Energy, that's, uh, what do you call it, Napo, 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 needs to do something about that. Reason, right now I'm coming from Adina, the entire Adina Zongo, it is off since 6 a.m. up to now, it is still off, I realize out. And yes. of minister, you took us to IMF, right after there, we also heard in the parliament that you are bringing the tow boost onto our new roads, so it means you are doing constant work. Press calls 90 on the calculator, you are going to get zero. And if a state minister of state is acting this way, he has to be sacked completely. You understand? Oh, <laughs> if the government says so, if the president says so, then it's a very big lie. Because you can see that everything is turned upside down in the country. My friend, if you go out there, or if you come where we are, you will see everything by yourself people are suffering seriously actually they have to look for better people that can manage the country well or they can do the work, the job it is not only that when the people are well educated certificate can never do anything for us if the president can do that then uh, we shall wait for the election day seriously speaking i would prefer if they would change all the ministers I've traveled outside Ghana before and I've realized that our ministers, even our government, is not helping us. But the minister, I'll say all of them, because I've not seen any improvement. I've not seen any change in our, our this country, so I prefer we change everything. Look at our ministers. They are too much. Look at our great ministers. We have some ministers. Even. So those are some of your views there. But speaking on PM Express here on the Johnny's channel, Professor Ajiman Bafoujia says, whilst the reshuffling may not necessarily change the current economic challenges, it is crucial to cut in costs and give citizens the confidence that government is listening. There is an important concept in governance, with, uh, which uh, within political science they call political efficacy. That refers to the responsiveness of leadership or government to the demands of citizens. It's as simple as that. I can tell you that for this republic, and I've been a close observer of the fourth republic, I've never observed any moment in any government's life where there is an overwhelming public sentiment in favor of reshuffle. That in itself, 
indicates very strongly that despite what the president thinks or says, the public demands a reshuffle. As simple as that. So that, that's an You see? So reshuffling by itself will not bring you anything unless you are willing to bring the person who commands first the respect of people, but more importantly, somebody who has demonstrated competence in the area. But you see, there is also the political consideration of re restructure. <laughs> if the president is serious and is interested in getting uh, uh, his party to break the eight, as I keep hearing, then maybe he should be looking at what I call earlier as political efficacy, in other words, being responsive to the popular uh, cry of people for the change. And as I said, frankly, over the past 30 years, I haven't seen any occasion where there is this kind of groundswell of uh, public sentiments for, for some changes in government. Now, Let's turn our attention now to the economy and the Ghana Statistical Service is warning that prices of goods and services may continue to rise on the market despite the onset of the harvest season uh, for food crops. The service says this is as a result of the heavy component of imported inflation in the overall pricing rate on the market. Inflation for July 2022 went up to 31.7%, that's up from 298 in June. This is the highest recorded since late 2003. Many traders have been lamenting the impact of the situation on their businesses. Say last Say, fifteen CD, twelve CDs twelve CDs fifteen CD, seventeen, Inti said your mobile, you know, Munya. Now, eh, Mango, you say, Salomango, Baco, Cecilia Baco, seven cities. And a popono, popono, so me and Satan cities. First, in there and nine in noon, ten cities. Say, say, they are about me and Sat. What a mellow. First, in there, thirty Ghana. And they say, say, ah, uh, and about forty, and then get one fifteen cities. Pay and so back ten cities, and a five. They say, near man, they buy it. We can now hear from the head of price statistics, uh, the Ghana Statistical Service, John Foster Jao, who tells Joy News the trend may persist. We are in the harvest season and look at the weight of food items in the basket. One would generally respect that the low uh, prices of food product because of the harvest season will bring it down. But there are other factors in the basket that affect inflation. If you continue seeing a higher 
important inflation because of the global crisis. There will be pastry fed in cutting food from the uh, farm gate to the market centers. So, yes, ordinarily, because of the season in which we find ourselves, I would have said yes. But these other factors are also things that we should not gloss over. And uh, my colleague Kofi J joins me in the studio uh, to give us some more detail on the inflation statistics. Uh, over the last period, Kofi, we've seen food and transport mm. uh, being the major drivers of inflation. Uh, we've dwelt so much on food. With yesterday, we talked about herrings, exactly. you know, yeah. being way above the headline figure of 31.7. Let's go into transport. What exactly is happening? Right. So, NS, you're right. You know, the headline figure is 31.7 percent, but if you do a disaggregation, you will see that uh, most of the, the key drivers all have inflation above this headline figure that we are talking about. And so we looked at you know, transport, transport inflation right from March to July 2022. And so March, um, you know, this year, transport inflation was around 27.6%. And this was above the headline figure back then in March. Now, fast forward, you can see, you know, some um, a, 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 what we call a stratospheric rise from what we see in March to July, which is 44.6%. And so you can see the color gradient actually increasing for transport inflation. We've moved all the way from 27.6% 20, to now 44.6%, almost you know, doubling what we were used to see in March this year. But what's, what is actually driving this transport inflation to go up? Now, in the world of inflation or in the arena of inflation, whatever happens to one commodity actually has the tendency to affect the other, especially when it has to do with fuel. So if you look at the inflation for diesel and petrol, almost all of them are imported. Now, just look at diesel. It has gone up by more than 113% this year. And petrol also has gone up uh, by more than 83%. Now, if you find diesel and petrol all going up, it is certain that it's going to affect transport fares. And when transport fares are up, you know, every other good uh, in the market also has the tendency of going up. That is why we actually see this trend that we are seeing. Uh, and so a year ago, inflation was a single digit. So a year ago, around this same time, we're talking about inflation, we're talking about 9%. Mm. Now we are talking about that same rate a year ago, and it's 31.7%, Enes. Very interesting analysis there, Kofi. Thank you very much. But uh, a government, uh, well, an economist mm. today has been speaking about this, Dr. Priscilla uh, Chumesi, and she says that government must you know, stop the shady deals around the trading of the city. We can now listen to her. So there's a lot of shadow economy that is organized around the currency because um, there is a, a price differential. The price you get in the formal financial sector is way lower. I'm sure that when you go to the bank, they'll probably be quoting something like eight point something to you. But when you go on the real market um, to deal with um, the foreign Forex Bureau and others, you might get it at a higher rate. So at this, the issue is for the central bank to be able to have a hang on the free fall of the city. And how the central bank can do that is options that allows the inflow of foreign currency because the demand is certainly outstripping the supply. Um, when you look at uh, handles for earning foreign currency, where is it coming from? And those are the issues that needs to be explored. And when we are exploring that, we also need to keep our eyes on the persistent demand for the, um, what do we call it, the dollar. Um, can we explore options where policy initiatives can encourage um, members of Guta to probably find alternatives of producing some of the things they import locally so that we ease the uh, persistent pressure on the currency? So these are issues that need to be addressed, both from the demand side and the supply side. But if you ask me, I think that an independent central bank that is managing the currency is good enough. So long as we have reserves to support it, you find that we always have control over um, the fluctuations in the currency. Now, away from the economy, a Tamale Circuit Court has remanded two persons into police custody for allegedly stealing net commuters, Abdul Haq Abubaki and 
an electrician, and Mohammed Abu Fidals, a radio presenter, are expected to reappear in court on August 18. The two are standing trial for stealing meters belonging to the Northern Electricity Distribution Company and dishonestly receiving them. The two who appeared in court today both pleaded not guilty to the charges. Counsel for the accused, Rashid Mohammed, has sought bail for his client, but his Honor Justice Alexander Owari declined the request and asked that they be remanded into police custody. Earlier, Abdul Haq Abu Bakar, one of the accused, had pleaded guilty to the charge, but later made a U-turn and pleaded not guilty. Speaking to the media after court proceedings, Mr. Rashid Mohammed said his client Abdul Haq Abu Bakar had earlier in court pleaded guilty because he did not fully understand the charges that were preferred against him. I did not insist that he pleads not guilty. I mean, it's his prerogative. To, to enter the plea, which he deems fit. If he did not commit the offence, I mean, there's no need for him to plead guilty. Uh, I believe the charges were not read out to him fully to his understanding. That was why he made an error and pleaded guilty. But upon rereading the charges to him and explaining it to him better, he understood the, 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 he understood the charge and then pleaded appropriately not guilty. Well, I was, I was disappointed. I mean, he pleaded not guilty, and per our laws, anybody who pleads not guilty to a charge is presumed innocent until he is, uh, he, he is convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, so he was entitled to bail. I mean, since all offenses are billable uh, in Ghana now. But uh, we would, we would, we would move to the appropriate quarters and ensure that we, we get bail for him. Senior counsel for NETCO, Terence Nina, said in the past NETCO was interested in people being punished by fines. But with the increase and constant theft of their meters, they are urging the court for custodial centers. Um, the offenses are quite um, straightforward. One is theft of meters uh, belonging to NETCO. Indeed, meters that had been fixed on the premises of our customers. And then sale of that meter to the first accused person who dishonestly received it, knowing it is stolen property. And what my learned friend said, he did not hear the charges read and explained properly to him. So in saying he was guilty, he did not probably understand what that meant. So it was a correction at the court that if um, he's entitled not to have, um, he's entitled to change his plea. Even if he said he's not guilty, he can change it the next time we come to court. In the same way, he can say he's guilty and then he changes his mind again. So that is open. You are not, the doors are not shut on you once you take a stance. So there's nothing wrong with that uh, procedure. And uh, all I was just saying was just to uh, uh, gently urge the court to observe the initial plea that he had taken and then, and then take note that the accused person had willfully, in my view, but that's not the same view my learned friend has. Um, and sometimes, but we were interested in the people being punished by a fine so that they can um, still go, on, go, out, go on, on with their normal business. But the incidence of these power thefts, the theft of meters, are such that we would at any opportunity urge the court for custodial sentence for as long as the laws will permit more. But the court has a discretion to find the person. It's a discretion exclusive, exclusive with the court. We stay with the police because the Asante Mampon Command is investigating circumstances under which over 8,000 seedlings of different tree species were dumped at a public refuge site at Bosom 4. It followed a complaint lodged by officials of the Forestry Commission. The Forestry Commission is collaborating with the police to get to the bottom of the matter. Ohim Interior reports. The attention of a monitoring team of the Forestry Commission at the Asante Mampon district was drawn to the operations of a car truck in the Ofin Head West Forest on July 28, 2022. While tracking suspicion the truck could be used by illegal loggers, the team was shocked to find three seedlings dumped in a refuse dump. The 8,011 seedlings, valued at 12,000 Ghana cities, included Ofram, Mahogany and Tick, Evis Merutiza, a principal resource guard who led the team, explained how the Kia truck escaped arrest. This is a plantation site, Waiye plantation site. We came here 
for an activity. When we saw a Kia truck moving out from this side, so we thought maybe they came to the illegal logging or something here. So we were chasing the Kia truck to find out what is inside the Kia truck. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the Kia truck. So we came back and traced to the side when we saw that the seedlings were dumped on the ground. The Forestry Commission, after sorting the seedlings, retrieved 5,891 live seedlings which have since been planted. The Asante Mampon police say they are following some vital leads that could lead to the arrest of corporates. Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission, John Aloti, who visited Mampon on Tuesday, says his outfit is collaborating with the police to thoroughly investigate the matter. Seedlings could come from um, two sources. They could be um, seedlings uh, which form part of the Green Ghana. They could also be uh, part of uh, maybe um, private industries that have raised seedlings, maybe hoping to sell to uh, the Forestry Commission uh, known for the Green Ghana activities. They probably were not able to sell. But we would wait uh, for the police to uh, finish their investigations. Uh, meanwhile, we uh, sent information around uh, for citizens uh, who we have uh, seen the truck move away uh, from the refuse dump. So that's how come uh, this information uh, went around. Records available at the district uh, indicate that um, some individuals and organizations came for bulk uh, quantities for their group. So we we also are making that information available to the police and we are, we are already following up uh, to check what has been planted by those groups. Meanwhile, Mr. Aloti has been inspecting some trees planted last year under the Green Ghana program. They include acacia, ofram, tick and other indigenous species. From Asante Mampon for Joy News, Ohimi Interia reporting. And still in the Ashanti region, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has hit back at the Office of Special Prosecutor, refuting claims of corruption leveled against some of its officials in the case of the Labianca Food Company. Commissioner of Customs, Colonel Retard Kujo Damwa, insists the report of the Special Prosecutor was released with malicious intent to discredit some of the officers. The report signed by Kisei Jabin alleged that influence peddling by Ms. Asumahine, who is a Council of State member, led to the reduction in tax liabilities for her frozen foods company, La Bianca. A Deputy Commissioner of Customs in charge of operations, Joseph Educe, was cited by the OSP for issuing what it describes unlawful uh, customs advance uh, ruling by the Commissioner speaking at the Customs Division's management retreat in Kumasi, described the reports as hollow and claims there's no issue with the dealing. Since three days ago, what has been happening? A report purporting or coming from the Office of the Special Prosecutor, trying to indict the Deputy Commissioner of Prisons and myself. And if anybody who has read that report very well will know the basis of that. And luckily for me, God is always on my side. Before that report came, that person had made a statement to some people who had come to them. He was going to publish something that will discredit me, and he would do that. And I even sent people to go and tell him that he's a small boy. I'm older than him. I have lived a meaningful life. If he attempts to destroy me, it won't be easy for him. People have tried it. I have survived, and this one too, I'll survive. All that happened, one of the reasons was because of Mr. Akurugu. He wanted Mr. Akurugu to be seconded to his office, and I said no. Mr. Akurugu is a custom officer, primarily employed to do customs work. And he is to partner Mr. Akutofachin in that office, African Continental Free Trade Area. He deals with tariffs and valuation. And therefore, I cannot second him to the office of the special prosecutor because he has a primary role to play in customs. And then he comes back through the commissioner again. And again, I said, I insist and will go by that, that he has a primary role. It is when I don't have a role for him or I can dispense of his services, I have others to do what he's 
going to do that I will give him to you. So I insist. And he calls me to his office when I, in, in relation to La Bianca. And at the end of it, he, call, he talks to me about this same matter. And I said, yes, it is not the commissioner general. I wrote it. Go and check it. And I have my reasons. He will not be released to you. He will be in customs. And then behind me, he goes to resign. He's given the position of commissioner of police a rank, and he's now with your office. And he goes to make allegations that Mr. Duce and myself will hit him, and they will deal with us. So that is it. That is the basis of that publication. But if you read it very well, there's nothing in it. It's hollow. Um, it's actuated by malice. And they, those who are behind it, they know themselves. They know themselves. They've tried it several times. It is not working, and they want it won't work. I'm ready for any prosecution. That's what he must do. Not to say that they should do further investigations up to 2017. Up to 2015, I have letters written by Deputy Commissioner Demis Agavo granting similar things. And I produced them when he called me. He didn't have the letters, but I had the letters. My predecessor, Mr. Kenson, had those letters. This is common practice in customs. If you want to remove me, I have no problems. I won't be Commissioner Customs forever. I'm ready to go, but don't disgrace me. The Ghana Community Radio Network has described as unfortunate and an affront on media freedom the decision of the Adan Traditional Council to bar journalists from Radio Adan from covering the just-ended Asafotufian Festival. The council, in a letter responding to the station's concern of omission on the list of media houses, said that radio stations should not mount a live studio at the event grounds, neither will its members, that's the chiefs, grant interviews to the media network. Again, it prohibited three of it, the journalists there from entering the venue. But chairman of the festival's organizing committee, Nene Obitre, explained further to John News that he explained to John News what informed their decision. For instance, uh, at the demonstration that was held, they said, we will not call you Nene Akwaku, Nene Chief, right? And that's the paramount chief. We will call you Akwaku. Then they say, oh, who that him? Yeah, why you call? Who that him? Oh, oh, can you do this to your paramount chief? Even if you do it to us, let's say, but the paramount chief of all. And the kind of things that they say, I mean, on printable words, I cannot say the same thing to you. It means that I'm saying it against him. So some of the things that they say, you know, um, got them into this trouble. As the chairman of the planning committee, I didn't speak. Mm -hmm. I, after after, after the, the deliberations, I asked them, what does it mean? What should I do with them? And the decision was what is carried in the letter. Mm -hmm. What so do you say to me. those who say uh, this decision is an affront to press freedom? Okay, so press freedom says that we should insult our chiefs. If you have an issue to talk about, you can talk about it without insulting. You know, if, if you feel so strongly about an issue, it's not a, it's not a problem that you, you must say it. But if you use... The, the language that is unrefined about your chiefs, what do you expect to happen? So whatever you want to say, you could have said it without actually, you know, going into the extreme that some of them, you know, uh, did. So this is the reason why um, the council took that decision. Mm. It's unfortunate that is the decision of the council. President of the Ghana Network of Community Radio Stations, Salete Nyomi, said the act is an affront to media freedom. It's rather very unfortunate. I mean, it looks like there are some forces behind which are trying to sideline Radio Adan because of the incident which occurred some 10 months ago when they vandalized the station and, uh, you know, uh, beat up some of the people, uh, 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 some of the equipment got destroyed and so on. You know, it, it, it's been a very, very funny turn of events. We don't even know what to expect next. So you're linking, yeah. you're linking the traditional council's ban on Radio Adan to cover the uh, program, the festival, exactly. to the, to the el electrochem issue? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because all plans are being made to just frustrate the radio station. Mm. 
but yeah. but the the traditional authority also raises a concern in their letter they say yeah. that they have used language uh, yeah. that is very offensive in addressing the chiefs which is one of the reasons they barred them from you know covering the program especially some individual you know journalists from that station um, yeah. what do you make of that yeah i mean i i know that there has been some you know differences between the chiefs and the community radio station as a result of uh, they seeing this whole Songo Lagoon issue from different points of view. But I don't think that they have directly been, I mean, insulted in the chief. Who, who does that? Where does this happen? I mean, even if people have a different point of view from what you have, why would you be bad? I mean, the festival itself is a public festival. Everybody's invited. I can imagine there are a lot of foreign journalists. People are carrying stories from various angles. Why would you want to ban an indigenous station from coming? It's an affront to press freedom. This is one of the occasions where I think that we need to be more united more than ever before. GCRN, of course, will, will look into it and take it up and see what can be done about it uh, at all levels. But I think this is not just about GCRN. It's not just about the Ghana Community Radio Network, but it's about the media as a whole. And I think this is the time that we expect the media to unite and condemn some of these things in no uncertain terms. At no point should be any media house be gagged. Should not. It's not. It's not. I mean, it, it, it doesn't agree with what our constitution says. Well, the Ghana Journalists Association today is organizing a news conference on this development. Let me take you live to the Accra International Press Center uh, for more on this. My colleague Michael Ashale is there for us. Uh, Michael, what can you report? Well, we seem to be having some challenges. Uh, Papani, if you're on the line, uh, tell us what you can report from the press center where the GJA is set to address this issue of Radio Adam being barred uh, from uh, you know, covering the Asafotufiam Festival, which has just ended. Yes, um, Ernest, so the, the latest that I found out just before coming out to speak to you was that the executives yesterday uh, visited the radio station as well to... Uh, I mean, have an interaction and a first hand uh, of a sort of information on what exactly happened and probably to give some background to the story. Um, again, we understand that they are in a crunch meeting right now trying to finalize what exactly they're going to be saying um, at the press conference. Uh, just uh, a few seconds ago, I saw Rebecca Ekwe, who's supposed to be the PRO for the Ghana Journalist Association, just walk into the meeting. So we should have live basis right now of gentleman in front of the set of microphones that have been put up, what we're expecting that they are going to put out a statement to address what really happened uh, um, at the uh, uh, radio at, uh, between themselves and that of the traditional council. Michael, thank you very much. And we have that live feed there. You see the General Secretary Kofi Yeboah as well as the uh, PRO, and I see the President well, also seated. Yes. We'll go live shortly uh, and bring you that feed after this break here on Newsday, took me and that's been Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us here on Newsday. Uh, live in your shot there is uh, a feed from the uh, Accra International Press Center where the Ghana Journalists Association is about to address the issue of Radio Adan being barred by the Adan Traditional Council from covering the Asafotufian Festival. The network of uh, community radio has raised issue with it. They describe this as an affront on media freedom. They had indicated they will petition the GJA and the National Media Commission on this. Well, today the GJA is set to address the issue. As you heard my colleague Michael Papani actually report, they have been to the ground to ascertain the issue for themselves, to pick first-hand information on the development. Well, you may know that the radio station wrote to the traditional council addressing the issue of omission on the list of media houses that have been published uh, to cover the event. The traditional council then wrote to them in return, reinforcing their decision not to allow them cover the event, also because they say 
uh, they have used unrefined language in addressing the chiefs of the traditional council. Uh, they believe that does not amount to press freedom. But the Media Foundation for West Africa indeed finds uh, issue with this, and especially because festivals are public events. Let's go live there and hear the General Secretary who is speaking now, Kofi Yeboa. Um, I can recognize Mr. Gabriel, Gabriel Busumpim, um, one of our respected senior colleagues in the profession. So as I said, as we go along, uh, we will introduce um, those we, we, we have here. So now I will um, take the opportunity to invite the President of the GDA, Mr. Abed Kwabrajun, for to address the House. Shall we welcome Mr. Abed Kwabrajun? <laughs> You have to tell it all the way. So just drop it. Just put it on there. Do four. Do four. Do four. Just put it on there. That's a sound. Okay, you put it on. Yeah, okay, so the sound man. That one sound man can to arrange the things. It's fine. Is that fine? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Members of the National Executive of the GJA, Chairman Greater Accra Branch of the GJA, Mr. Gabriel Busumpim, a veteran journalist, and GJA Rep, new rep on the National Media Commission, colleagues in the media, invited guests, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. On behalf of the National Executive of the Ghana Journalist Association, I wish to express profound gratitude to you for responding to our invitation at a very short notice. This is the first press conference we are addressing since the new administration took office one and a half months ago. We believe you will continue to rally behind the programs and activities of the GJA for the good of the association. Colleagues in the media, you may recall that in my inaugural speech on June 30th, 2022, I underlined the commitment of the June 4 administration to defend press freedom at all time. In that regard, I indicated our intention to establish a fund called the Journalist Support Fund to address press freedom and welfare matters. This morning, we have invited you here to address an issue that touches the heart of press freedom and which needs urgent attention. This has to do with the decision of the, of the Adar Traditional Council to ban Radio Adar from covering this year's Asafutufiame, the festival of the chiefs and people of the Ada traditional area. Upon hearing the news, I directed the General Secretary and the National Organizing Secretary to go to Ada to gather first hand information on the matter to better inform our intervention. The GJ delegation, which also included Mr. Efo Maube, interacted with staff of Radio Ada and persons close to the Ada Traditional Council. And so we have a good appreciation of the issues at stake to inform our address. Ban on coverage of Asafutu Fiamme. Ladies and gentlemen, of the media. It is instructive to note that since its establishment 24 years ago, Radio Ada has covered Asafu Tufiyami every year. It is always accorded prominent place 
and space to mount its outside broadcast equipment at the festival grounds. But this year, for the first time in its history, Radio Ada was denied its status at the celebration of Asafu Tufiami. The blacklisting of the radio started with the Ada Traditional Council, not inviting Radio Ada for the coverage of the official launch of the festival at the Treasure Island Ada on June 30th, 2022. On July 14th, 2022, the management of the radio station wrote to Ada Asafu Tufiame Planning Committee 2022 to draw its attention to what it believed to be the inadvertent omission to the regular protocol of the planning committee. The management followed up on, the, on its letter with a delegation to meet the Adapt Traditional Council on August 1st, 2022 to further, dis to further discuss the matter. According to officials of the radio station, the outcome of the meeting with the Adapt Traditional Council was positive. However, the Adapt Traditional Council followed up with a letter to the radio station same day, August 1st, 2022 delivering the council's decision to place restrictions on Radio Ada as follows. One, Radio Ada will not allow to mount a stage, will not be allowed, Radio Ada will not be allowed to mount a stage at Ada Asafutu Fiyami Park. Yes, sir. Nene, and that's point two, point two. Nene, me. Neneme will not grant interviews to journalists from Radio Ada. Three, Noah Dame, Sewawari, and Amano Ziagu, who happen to be hosts of programs with unrefined language towards Neneme, are not to be seen at the park in Radio Ada paraphernalia. Indeed, in our fact finding mission, Persons close to the Adan Traditional Council expressed deep concern about the use of insulting and disrespectful language by program host of Radio Adan against the enemy. And I must reiterate on this that we engaged both parties yesterday. We engaged the management of Radio Adan and also members of the Traditional Council. I want to stress on that. They cited the regular practice of the reporters mentioning the names of Neneme without according them their titles and also inciting the people to hoot at Neneme and call them names during a, a demonstration. Colleagues in the media, whilst appreciating the concerns of Neneme as indicated above, especially what they described as unrefined language used to address them by program host of the radio station, the GJ believes the imposition of restriction on the radio station and its reporters is unjustifiable. In fact, it is an affront to press freedom as guaranteed in Article 21, 1A and F of the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana and Article 19 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. With all due respect, the ADA Traditional Council does not have the right or powers to impose such restrictions on Radio Ada and its staff. We also consider the bearing of the three reporters of Radio Ada from wearing the paraphernalia of the radio station, and particularly the mention of their names, a threat to their lives and that of their family. We should be mindful of how such public disclosure of names of journalists are led to the killing of such journalists and we should refrain from such actions. We believe one major significance of festivals is to use the occasion to foster peace, unity, and oneness of purpose among the people to promote the development of the community. We also recognize the concept of community radio as being the rallying force for the promotion of the culture and social economic development of the host communities. NMC
complain. Colleagues in the media, the, we, we understand that at that traditional council has filed a complaint at the National Media Commission, NMC, against Radio Ada for professional misconduct. We commend the traditional council for taking such steps because that is one of the appropriate, appropriate forums to seek redress on such matters. However, the Adam traditional council violated the rules on complaint settlement of the NMC per the imposition of restrictions on the radio station and its reporters. Section 13.2 of the National Media Commission Act 1993, Act 449, provides a person who has lodged a complaint with the commission shall, unless he withdraws the complaint, exhaust all avenues available for settling the issue by the commission before a resource, before a resource to the to, before resource to the court, before resource, recourse, before recourse to the courts. Since the complaint by the Adam Traditional Council is still pending and has not been withdrawn, the council violated the NMC rules of engagement for complaint settlement by constituting itself into a traditional court to punish the radio station and its staff. Way forward. On the way forward, the GDA calls on the adult traditional council not to take the law into their own hands and that it should endeavor to use the due process of law to address its concerns. The council must also refrain from action that have the tendency to endanger the lives of the radio station and its staff. We also advise Radio Adan and its staff to refrain from using insulting and unacceptable language in the discharge of their duties. They should endeavor to exhibit high professional standards at all times. We, are, we however, encourage them to continue to discharge their constitutional mandate as provided in Article 162, Clause 5 of the 1992 Constitution to hold the responsibility and accountability of the government to the people of Ghana. They must continue to play the watchdog role of the media in the interest of the people and the good citizens of Adan. We wish to encourage both the Adan Traditional Council and the management of Radio Adan to find amicable ways of resolving their differences. We urge them to consider each other as partners in development and work together to promote development in the area. The GJ is interested in seeing peace restored between the Adan Traditional Council and Radio Adan. Colleagues in the media, we have discussed the case of Adan Radio with the leadership of the Ghana Police Service who have assured us of full protection for the staff of Radio Ada to enable them go about their normal duties. We believe we will return to Ada so that development, so that development will also find space in the land through the vent provided by the media. Colleagues in the media, may you indulge me to use this opportunity to which said Kweku Mensa, one of our own, Akropeto. Said Kweku Mensa Akropeto, one of our own, who is also a reporter of KFM, in the OT region, speedy recovery. KMA, in short, as it's popularly called, was among seven people who were involved in a gas explosion incident at Pasa in the Quantano district. Two, where three of the victims are reported dead but our brother and colleague is currently receiving treatment at the best unit of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. May God be his helper. Also, we want to stress on this, that the GJ will follow closely this issue to its conclusion. We will not leave it at only issue of press conference of at, at all issue of press statement and addressing press conferences, we will follow it to the final conclusion. We also want to take the opportunity 
to once again wish or express our deepest condolences to Bernard Koku Avle, who lost his wife a week ago. Thank you all for your kind attention. God bless you. You had the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, Albert Jufu, address that news conference on the development at Adan, where the traditional council barred the community radio station, Radio Adan, from covering this year's Asafotufian festival. The GJA says the action is unjustified and an affront to media freedom. Uh, it also says it's met with the traditional council and they, it is encouraging the traditional council to use alternative means to address the issues. But the GJA also sees the language of the traditional council as a threat to the lives of the individual journalists who were singled out in that letter. And let me read to you what exactly the letter said. The letter in the point three said, named the journalists and said that they are not to be seen at the event. They are not to be seen at the park where the, uh, the festival was to be held and also not to hold the paraphernalia of the radio station. And it is further directing the station to respect the restrictions or in order to avoid any embarrassment. So these are the words of the traditional council. The GGA says it will follow up on the issue and has spoken to the police. The police has assured of full protection for the journalists involved at Radio Adam. That's it for News Decks. My name is Ernest Mena. Apologies, we couldn't bring you sports and business, but we have more for you at midday. But you can log on to myjohnline.com where you find more stories. Stay with us.